All right, guys, uh, PA Farms, uh, when I started YouTube, one of the earliest videos that I made uh, way back in the videos, before I found my voice and kind of <laughs> had much of a following, I did a video of installing this uh, tank on the baler, and I've had a lot of people ask me about it. I have explained it a couple times. Uh, the other day, I was watching uh, Bagwell Farms, and he uh, had mentioned PA Farms, uh, so I'll mention Bagwell Farms. Uh, he's doing the same, he's making his own uh, hay preserve applicator for his baler which is it's a fun project and it doesn't really cost a whole lot compared to what a kit costs uh, now granted the kits are automatic a lot of them uh, they kind of take a lot of the guesswork out of it for you and probably the kits would do a better job than a homemade uh, in my opinion just because they're kind of automatic um, but let me get into this quick uh, I know I've covered this I want to uh, just go over a couple things that maybe I didn't cover in those very early videos when I was kind of new and didn't have anybody watching and uh, the videos got views since then but I didn't go into the costs I didn't go into the nozzles the pressures the installation very well um, let me cover this uh, if anybody's wanting to do this or if you want to take a similar idea and improve on it uh, that's fine with me this is what I came up with uh, so let's get into this video Okay, so this was an ambitious project that I, well, maybe not ambitious, but uh, I wanted to do this uh, project. Um, I have had experience with hay preservative in the past. Uh, the dairy, one dairy farm I used to work on, he swore by hay preservative and it, he said you cannot make second cut hay in Pennsylvania without hay preservative. Uh, now granted, I think he was doing alfalfa mostly. Um, and he was somebody that liked to bale it on the wet side too but uh, i have ha i have made some second cut hay here depending on the weather but uh he swore by it and uh i figured well i i didn't have any customers at the time so i went ahead and decided to do this project so i wouldn't get stuck with wet hay like i have been and uh <laughs> I, I did this project and I did not realize that uh, my customers don't want it on their hay. I didn't have any customers at the time. I figured maybe I'd be selling to people who have some cattle, but uh, no such luck. It's only been uh, horse sales for horse people and they don't want it on. Um, so you got to do what the customer wants. So this project that I spent all this time and uh, money uh, doing um, I've never used this now granted I have tested it quite a bit uh, I've ran a lot of water through it to get the nozzle spacing right to get the pressure just right um, I, I have tested it quite a bit so it will work so if ever I can use it if I have somebody that says hey I have some cows will you bail me some hay uh, if it's wet I can I can put it on um, this project did not cost a whole lot of money on my part uh, this was a very cheap way to do this uh, versus what the new ones cost and I think uh, the video about Bagwell Farms he had uh, priced some of them and uh, they are very pricey uh, they can be very pricey so all right, this uh, tank here started out life as a country line uh, ATV sprayer from Tractor Supply. Uh, I bought this maybe back in the winter time, and being that it was winter time, this was on their sales uh, clearance rack, discount rack uh, in the back for $79.99, which I think these are like $125 originally if you would buy them uh, in season. I bought it out of season, so $79, not a bad price. Uh, I don't know how many gallons. If it's a 20 gallon, this is kind of dirty. 30 gallon? 30 gallon is what it's saying. Uh, it comes with the pump and it also has the gauge, which is nice. Uh, some of these you can get without a gauge. This one has the gauge so you know what your pressures are doing. Um, and it has a regulator on the pump. You can regulate how much pressure it's putting on. Uh, so that was the first step. I bought that and I was looking for a place to mount it. A lot of these hay preservative kits, they mount them on this rail back here i didn't like it there just because you it's in the way of your twine box if you have to work at your knotters if you your uh uh twine uh gets unhooked you got to get under there and i i didn't want it there and backing it in the shed i didn't want to back it into anything um so this fit on a new holland or most balers this fit absolutely perfect right there uh yeah it might look ugly it is sitting right on top um but it fit perfect so the next thing i did i drilled some holes actually i think these holes might have even been there um i put these eye bolts in and there's four of them i think i had to drill the back holes yeah i had to drill the back holes 
So we put these eye bolts in. That was the next step. The tank was in place, drilled the hole for the eye bolts. I had the ratchet straps. I had to buy the eye bolts. They weren't very expensive. I had the ratchet straps, so they were here already. Um, I put them on to hold this thing down. It is very solid with the two of them. The tank has a... Oh, Oh, that's good. That tank has a little indent there for you to tie it down. Um, so with the ratchet straps, it's not going anywhere. So then it was mounted and I uh, had it on. It wasn't going to go anywhere. I only spent about $80, $90 so far. Uh, the next thing, the hose. They gave you a 30 foot or 50 foot uh, hose with a wand. Here's where the wand would stick on. Um, all I had to do was it comes out of the regulator or the valve there comes around. I made it this long and I cut it off. Then I decided I wanted to have a shut off because these aren't no drip nozzles. That's one thing I want to get into. Um, so a shut off. So here I can stand here and I can open it or close it. So this was a fairly cheap shut off and I wanted a way to, way to disconnect this uh, so I didn't have to undo all of this. Uh, so you just unthread it here and uh, take your ratchet straps off. I can pull this whole thing off and leave this behind. So that's why I did that. So then I just reused the rest of the hose, uh, came down. Originally I was going to drill a hole and run this hose inside this uh, inside the baler just to hide it and then have it come out here to the nozzles i decided against that idea uh, even though it would have hidden it um, if i get a leak or any type of problem if uh, one of my hose clamps uh, is loose and it's leaking all over i don't want to have it spraying inside here uh, i decided to make it visible Put it out in the open and make it visible so uh, the next thing we run the hose down around uh, these are modified uh, boom clamps uh, all i did was take a boom clamp and bend it to the right uh, place and run one bolt in and that was enough to hold it um, they are mounted a little lower than maybe i would have liked uh, but you can't there's not much other <laughs> you see the way the lid opens so I have them mounted as high as possible so the spacing um, that I had estimated there's a little bit of a place here uh, now of course your pickup or your header is going to be down so you have more distance it's not that close but when it was down I had estimated the these are flat fan nozzles so they're going to throw it in a fan pattern both sides there's a little place here that it doesn't cover. It's just this little bit in there. Um, but this nozzle here, we'll throw it to the end and we'll meet this fan here. So I have got pretty good coverage, just a little bit on the inside that I could not get. And I'm not really that uh, concerned about it. Um, so uh, <laughs> I got all that put on here the next thing is the electric to make this run uh, you'll notice there's a electric wire it's just a cheap electric wire that I wanted to kind of hide and I kind of went overboard with hiding it uh, you'll see it goes down into the baler here I have it zip tied all along here there you can see some zip ties and then I have it down and I actually ran it through the tongue uh, just like the hydraulic valves and the thrower control, all that stuff goes down in the back of the tongue, runs up, and comes out through here. So this, uh, is it this one? No, the green, the green was for the uh, moisture sensor that I put in the chamber, the Agritronics uh, uh, bale moisture sensor. So the second wire was this. So I have two electrical, three electrical connections to make when I hook up this baler. One for the thrower, one for the moisture sensor. That's this one. And then this one here is for the hay preserve applicator all through the tongue. So they're not going to get uh, snagged on anything. They're not going to get uh, rubbed or, or uh, uh, I didn't want any connection problems. If anybody has any questions on how to get it through the tongue, you start up at the front here, run a fish tape, just an electrical fish tape all the way through. Uh, tape your wires onto the fish tape pull it back you've got your wires up here so same deal on the tractor here is my connection for the baler uh, maybe could have done a neater job I could have maybe just put it all in one plug if I wanted to be fussy just like a big trailer plug um, we might do something like that but this works for now uh, especially if I can't use it so that's how I did that so uh, coming up into the cab 
The thrower control box is right here. And I'm always clicking this to speed up or slow down the thrower. I decided to utilize this box instead of making a whole nother box. I drilled a hole in it and put this switch here. This switch will send power back to the heat preservative applicator. Just turn it on. I got a switch. It's a toggle switch that has a light in the end. I figured the light would be nice to uh, keep an eye on this to know when it's running because it has a visual light. Um, and of course, I just mounted this here. I put this here because you're looking out this way anyway and uh, using this control so it's all in the same place. And then from that control box, we just went down to the batteries here on the 986 to uh, get power. So it wasn't, a, wasn't too complicated. Uh, kinda just was more time consuming than anything. Um, all right, so like I said, I have tested this, uh, the flow rate to get your pressure. Now this is very touchy, this regulator on here. All right, so here you have, uh, this is the outlet, the inlet from the tank, it goes into here. And then you have these two valves here. And then here's your outlet uh, after the gauge reads it. Everything is dirty. So it's just a, it's a high flow gold series, probably a made in China pump. There is a fuse here. So if you haven't, if I have any trouble, I can check the inline fuse. So it is fused um, back at the pump. Um, so these uh, little regulator valves here, yeah, boom. You can add a boom to this. You can take this cap off and uh, put a second one out to a boom. So that one's shut off. This is the one I'm using, I think. And this is how I regulate the uh, flow. I had it, uh, uh, the nice thing is it doesn't matter how high you're running the tractor or the throttle, this is gonna use the same, uh, this is gonna be constant. Um, so with the constant pressure, I just choked it down uh, until I had a, a half decent uh, flow rate. I didn't want too much, um, just enough. Uh, I, I never did calibrate how many pounds I'm putting on. That is one of the disadvantages with this. Uh, it was more or less just to get everything coated. Um, I, I didn't get that far. I've never used this with hay preservative. I even have hay preservative here and the customers just don't want it. I don't know why. I've explained to them that it is safe for horses. There is uh, varieties of hay preservative that uh, horses can eat and it won't bother them and uh, still no go. So the nozzles. Um, this is actually bent a little bit. I went to uh, Zimmer Zimmerman Farm Service and I told them, I said, can you get me uh, the nozzles that go in your crop care hay preservative kit? So these are number 50 screens that I have in there. Somebody had told me that you need 100 mesh for hay preservative. I don't know. I just stuck the 50s in because that's what I had. So I wanted to use T-Jet um, and these fittings, all this I had and the cap, all I needed were these tips. So I don't know if the camera's focusing, I'm outside, I can't see, but I'll read it to you. It is a T-Jet XR 1100, or no wait, 11,001 VS. Uh, these are a very fine mist uh, for, a, this is what the crop care, uh, what Zimmerman tells me, the crop care kits use. So I got two of those and I put those in there. So uh, let me do a summary on this video and uh, wrap it up here.